NBC presents Frank Lovejoy in... Night Beat! Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. I guess it's the unpredictability of night that catches hold of you and takes you with it. You never know what you'll find in the night or who you'll meet and what stories they'll tell. There are as many stories as there are people. All kinds of stories and all kinds of people. Gentle stories sometimes, and where you least expect to find them, brutal stories. Hidden behind as innocent a facade as the one which fronts the welcome mission on Skid Row. Spender, the blind man, is both a Skid Row landmark and tradition. For years, he sat cross-legged near the entrance of the welcome mission. And for a blind man, he sees an awful lot. Going into the mission, are you, Randy? Oh, maybe, Spender. You got a good memory for footsteps, haven't you? Nothing wrong with my hearing. Everyone walks different, only they, they just don't know it. You always walk like you're thinking every step, like something was on your mind. Well, don't let me kid you, Spender. It's just a pose. Is that brother James? Yeah. You better go see him, Randy. Not while he's playing a recital for the faithful. Oh, no one's in there. Never is this time of night. <laughs> Too early for him. You better go in there. He's in trouble. Mission men don't get into trouble. Go take a look. Somebody's got to help him. Maybe you can. Tell him something for me. Tell him one blind man on the street's enough. He'll know what I mean? Take a look at him. You'll see. A good look, Randy. Okay, Spinner. You must look bad. Sounded awful. The welcome mission was row on row of empty chairs. And Brother James, his back to me, was playing the organ. He didn't turn around when I came in. Just faced the empty music stand and kept on playing. Join in the chorus if you know the words, brother. I'm not in good voice tonight, Brother James. Randy, it's good to see you again. <laughs> well, how do you know? You haven't seen me yet. Just the same. It's good. I know it is. Everything going all right? Fine, just fine. I hope things go well with you. Thank you. But you still won't look at me. To tell you the truth, Randy, I'm doing you a favor. I had a little accident. Well, I'm afraid I don't look very well. Spender said to tell you that one blind man on the street is enough. Spender's a good friend, but he sees too much. Uh, he hears too much. Now, hey, let me see. Let me take a look at you. It isn't anything, Randy. I turned Brother James' face toward me. One eye was partly opened, and the other was swollen shut, a painful mass of purple, blue, and green. And the welts on the side of his head stuck out like baseballs. He didn't look human. He was a beaten pulp. It made me sick. It's a lot better now. It doesn't hurt at all. Well, it won't until the feeling comes back. What happened? Don't tell me you bumped into a door. I wouldn't lie to you, Randy. And who did it and why? Sometimes it's best to say nothing. To turn the other cheek and say nothing. Well, if you'd turn the other cheek, you wouldn't be able to talk. I don't expect you to understand my ways, Randy. But they are my ways. You must respect them. Who did it? Spender said it sounded awful. Sometimes the path of righteousness is difficult. Sometimes it's tortured and hard to understand. Do you understand? Yes. I think I do. Spender says you're in trouble. I must find some way to set his mind at ease. Well, okay, Brother James, you know your mm -hmm. business. Go your way in peace, Randy. Yeah. Thanks. I finally find them, Brother James. Five dozen ping-pong balls. Oh, you would not believe the trouble that... Oh. Hello, Mama Rizzo. Oh, Randy. I did not notice you. Uh, Randy was just leaving, Mama Rizzo. Uh, there is no more trouble, is there? He has not come again. Who, oh, Mama, what trouble? Uh, that's... You know, Brother James? Everything's all right, Mama. It's good he has not come again. Next time I will kill Mama, him. Mama, please. Who? Mama. Who will you kill and why? 
Oh, no. I have said too much. I go now. I will come back later, Brother James. Wait, Mama. Mama Rizzo took off down the street like someone had fired on her. I'd known her as a skid row fixture for years. Her and the pizza cart she pushed all over the west side of town. But I'd never heard her threaten to kill anyone. And I had the feeling from the way she said it, she might do it. I caught up with her halfway down the block. Oh, please, Randy, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Look, now just hold a minute here. What's this all about? Oh, I am too much out of breath to talk. Well, catch your breath. I have nothing to say. Well, you had stuff to say back in the mission. Oh, I, I should not have said it. I was excited. There was trouble, but I should have said nothing. Who are you going to kill? The guy who beat up Brother James? I, I am excited only. I, I, I not mean what I say. You must forget I said it, Randy. Well, we'll both forget it. Now, what happened to Brother James? Who beat him up? I, I, I do not know. Oh, Mama. Randy, already I say too much things to you. I like you. We are old friends. Sometimes soon I give you some pizza. But now, uh, now you must leave me alone. I am very busy. Yeah, I know. You've got five dozen ping pong balls and you went to a lot of trouble to get them. Oh, you do not know how much. It... What are you going to do with them? Uh, they are for the mission. Recreation games. That's a lot of recreation for an empty mission. They are for recreation. Who beat him up, Mama? I do not know. You sure? I am sure of this, Randy. Each time you ask me, I will tell you I do not know. Now, this is time I go, and you do not follow me. Spender was wearing a knowing smile when I walked back near the mission. There wasn't any triumph in it. It was just his way of showing me he knew that I wasn't getting anywhere. Like the rest of Skid Row, Spender operated under a well-defined but peculiar set of rules. There was justice in them, but Spender was no informer. He trusted me, and I had to trust him. Mama Rizzo isn't ready to talk, Randy. Well, you could have saved me the 50-yard dash. I'm not in condition. You saw Brother James? Yeah, and he looks just like it sounded. Awful. I thought so. It took a long time. Well, who did it? I don't know. Look, Spender, you're the one who told me he was in trouble. Give me a break. I tell you, Randy, I, I really don't know. It happened quick in the alley back of the mission. I was here. No one came this way. Whoever did it went the other way when it was over. It took a long time. Yeah, you said that. What was Brother James doing in the alley? Instinct keeps me out of all Skid Row alleys. There's a back entrance to the mission. He went to lock up for the night a couple of nights ago. Someone was waiting for him. A while back, you said it was too early for anyone to come to the mission. They come later, you said. About two in the morning. Everyone comes. The winos, the flops, Mama Rizzo, everybody. They, they troop by me and go in. Why? What happens at two? I don't know, but they stay a long time. Nobody plays the organ. Nobody sings. I, I don't hear them after they go in the door. Well, how long do they stay after they all go in? Shh. Wait a minute. He'd know. He'd know the whole thing. Who? Oh. The guy, the, the one just got out the car and went to, went to the saloon across the street. You know him? Just his walk. He comes around here a lot lately. Once or twice he goes to the mission, but mostly he goes to the saloon across the street. They call him Mino. Okay, I'll call him Mino too. The saloon across the street was regulation. Dark, musky, a few tables you could stumble over if you didn't watch your step, and a few winos as conveniently located. The man called Mino sat at a bar side saddle looking across the street toward the welcome mission. He was dressed a little sharp, big, thick looking, with no expression in his eyes. He wasn't surprised when I sat down beside him. Another shot, buddy. Are you drinking, buddy? No, buddy, I'm not. Uh, just leave the bottle, huh? Uh, buddy, you look like a guy with something on his mind. Well, good for me. A friend of mine got his head beat in a couple of nights ago, Mino. 
You look like a guy who might know something about it. Ah, good for me. Well, buddy, I, I'd be willing to suppose a little with you about your friend. All right, go ahead. Let's take a real wild shot and figure your friend is the soothsayer type, huh? Maybe pumps an organ at the mission, say, and uh, saves a soul here and there. Let's call him Brother James. Yeah, why not? As long as we're supposing. And in my way of thinking, a guy don't generally get in trouble if he sticks to his own line. But if he overlaps a little here and there, he can get himself some rough treatment. Believe me, buddy, I've seen it happen. No kidding. Yeah. Now, your friend, Brother James, uh, he should stick to soul saving. That's his line. And uh, maybe you've got a line, too, buddy, huh, that you ought to stick to? Yeah, yeah, but uh, back to Brother James. He shouldn't get beaten up for saving souls. Oh, you're right, buddy. You're real right. So is the competition for souls so tough a guy can get hurt in a rush? Yeah. You know, i tell you something, buddy. You, uh, you seem to have a lot of time on your hands. Why don't you show at the welcome mission along about 2 in the a.m.? Might cop yourself an eyeful. Well, thanks, buddy. I might do that. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this 2 o'clock date, has it got anything to do with ping-pong balls? Yeah. Everything. <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning. Both Spender and Mino called it H hour at the welcome mission. I had a while to wait. Time enough to figure me and all for the set of fists that softened up Brother James. I still didn't know why. But that's before I knew the skid row rules for ping pong. At two o'clock, I stood across the street and watched the flop houses and the wine parlors empty into the welcome mission. A little bit later, I followed the crowd. The chairs were still empty in the big room where Brother James had played the organ, but a shaft of light and some curious sounds were coming from a back room. I started for it, and suddenly there was someone at my side. Take me along, Randy. Help me watch your teeth. Sure, Spender. Only keep it low. Uh, big crowd here, eh, Randy. Everybody, like I said. Yeah, well, maybe they won't notice us. All right, brothers, you've bought your cards. We'll turn the wheel again. What's the ball is the number 12. Uh... <laughs> Is it, Randy? It's a policy wheel, Spender. Brother James is running a policy wheel. Holy Toledo in the back of a mission. Policy wheel? That's, that's like the numbers, right? It's the same deal. This is a big cylinder. Brother James grinds the handle on it, and when he stops, a ping-pong ball with a number on it drops out the slot in the bottom. Mama Rizzo calls off the number, and the guys check it off on their cards. Oh. Like number bingo. three. Oh, no. Just like bingo. Yeah, that's right, Spender. Only policy wheels are run by the syndicates. A multi-million dollar racket. Hold everything, brothers. We seem to have some visitors, Mama Rizzo. Randy. <laughs> run, Mama Rizzo. Get the book. Someone heaved a pineapple through the window off the alley. I shoved Spender through the door, and the last thing I saw with guys climbing over each other trying to get out was Mama Rizzo clutching a big black book and heading out the alley entrance. Randy Stone will be back in just a moment. And now, back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. I lost Spender somewhere in the confusion. When the blast was over, I picked myself off the floor in the big main room of the mission. The place was deserted. If any of them were hurt, they took their wounds with them. All except Brother James, who might have run, except that he caught most of the blast. I called the police and went with them to the emergency hospital. After a while, Lieutenant Cass came out of Brother James' room, and I was waiting for him. Uh, it's in pretty bad shape. Yeah, I thought so. Check a few things with you. What was going on down there before someone tossed a pineapple in the middle of it? He was running a policy wheel. 
This brother James? Yeah, in the back room of the welcome mission. How about that? Half of Skid Row was there, 20, 30 guys. Doc says the brother looked like he got beat up. Blows on the head, bruises. Oh, that happened a couple of nights ago, before the blast. Mm. You had this thing pretty well cased, didn't you? Well, I got a tip that Brother James was in trouble, that's all. Mm, he got tipped right, he sure is. There's a guy named uh, Mino something mixed up in this. He was on Skid Row tonight. Probably beat Brother James up and probably tossed the bomb. Mino, Mino. There's a Mino Victor, a low man with a rack. It's General Punk around, huh? A big, thick guy, black hair, black eyes? Well, that's Mino. That all you know? That's all I know now. Yeah, well, we'll pick up Mino if we can find him. You, uh, keep in touch, huh? Sure, sure. Skid Row was quiet when I got back. Spender was the only familiar face in sight. We went back into the welcome mission and picked our way through the rubble of old bricks and splintered wood and ping-pong ball. Brother James' policy wheel had been blown to bits. Still smells hot and powdery. Looks pretty bad, doesn't it, Randy? That's yeah, pretty bad. It's a wonder some of us weren't killed. We still might lose him, Brother James. Yeah. Spender, it, it's, it's cockeyed. We got a lot of elements here that just don't mix. Brother James and the policy wheel. Homemade bombs and the welcome mission. They, well, they just don't go together. You saw, I heard. They went together, all right. Yeah, I know, but I've known Brother James for three years. He always seemed like a right guy, a fellow who was dedicated to his work. He's done a lot of good on Skid Row, and that's not easy. Well, you saw him running the wheel. You saw his head bashed in. Yeah, I know, I know, but it still doesn't make sense. You know, Randy, sometimes I'm glad I'm a blind man. You don't have to see things you don't want to see. You can't take a man at his face value if you can't see his face. Have you got it all figured, Spender? No, I don't think so. Brother James is, uh, how old would you say? Oh, late 40s, I guess, somewhere in there. Late 40s, uh, and you, you've known him three years. Not very long in years to know a man. What are you saying, Spender? Just, uh, how well do you know Brother James? Did you know him well on September 18, 1948? I didn't know him at all then. Might help if you knew him then. September 18th, 1948. What happened then? Smart newspaper fellow like you can find that out, Randy. Maybe it's no good, but you find out for yourself. I'll find out. I'll be around if you need me, Randy. Oh, how about Mama Rita? You seen her? I haven't even heard her. I'll be at the Star, Spender. If you get a line on her, give me a call. I left word at the Star switchboard that I'd be in the library. Brook, the keeper of the files and back issues of the paper, is a thin, twisted man the color of book. He's got a card file for a mind and all the natural animation of a dry leaf. September 18th, 1948, hmm? Not much of a day for news. Yeah. Well, just get the star for that day, will you? I'm... What I'm looking for may not qualify as big news. Hmm. Now, if you'd picked the 17th of September 48, I could have given you Count Bernadette's assassination. No, no, thank you. The 18th. 18, eh? Well, you know what you're looking for. Oh, seems to me there was something on the 18th. Just get the file copy down, will you? I'll look for the story. Had something to do with Burma. Oh, I know, I know. They declared state of emergency throughout Burma that day after the assassination of Yutin Tut. Well, he was a former foreign minister of Burma, you know. Paul Rook, please get the file copy. Your storehouse of facts impresses me, but I need the paper. Right. Just trying to be friendly, you know. Don't get a lot of traffic in here, especially on the overnight. Well, I get some more in. Well, next time I'll bring some of the boys with we'll play a little poker. Hey, no, thanks. Casino is my game. Casino or flinch? Uh, there you are. Thanks. Yeah. Here we are. September 18, 1948. Well, it's on page one. Oh, yeah, yes, it is. Column right on the right. Uh oh, where? Right there. You tin tot assassinated. Burma declares state of emergency. Uh, honest, Brooke. That isn't the story I'm looking for. Huh? Okay, it's your problem. Yeah. Well, that's a familiar. James Freeland, sentence in Norfolk's rack of cleanup. Contact man for syndicate receives life sentence for part in policy wheel racket. 
Now, that's Brother James, all right. Oh, is it? Not, not much resemblance. Well, there shouldn't be any. Well, he couldn't be such a bad chap because here he's going to repent, you see? We'll spend his confinement repenting, and when he gets out, he'll do things differently. Yeah, he did, too. That's exactly what he did. I'll get it, Rook. I'm expecting a call. Hello. It's Spender, Randy. Yeah, Spender. Something's going on down here. A few minutes ago, me and those cars stopped across the street. He went up in the hotel above the spoon where you saw him. Better call Lieutenant Cass. I don't think so, Randy. Just know Mama Rizzo's cart stopped there, too. She's up there now. You said to let you know. Well, you keep an ear on him, Spender. I'll be right there. You found out about Brother James? Uh, yeah, Spender. Thanks. Mama Rizzo's pizza cart was parked in front of the Pinchy Hotel when I got there. I walked up the stairs. I'd pass for a desk clerk with sound asleep. He probably wouldn't have been much help anyway. And Mama Rizzo's voice from a room down the hall told me all I needed to know. I leaned against the door and the knob turned slowly in my Crazy thing. Put the rod down. Somebody get themselves. Somebody will help you kill yourself. Already you get to buy with too much. Look behind you, Dame. I got a buddy. I don't take my eyes off me. No, come on. Well, better give me the gun. I might go off. <coughs> Randy, no. Now give it to me, Mama. <coughs> Thanks, buddy. Help. Randy, no. Get away. Well, let him go. <coughs> Where did you get this gun, anyway? It's a regular blunderbuss. Oh, you are the blunderbuss. Why you do this? For hours I'm looking for this Mino. Finally I find him. And then you come. Why you do this? Don't worry about Mino. The cops will get him. They're all looking for him. Oh, if he kill a brother James, I will kill him. Brother James isn't dead yet. Oh, you know who he is, you know. He's from the kingdom. They must have thought their own way until Brother James took over. It doesn't matter what he runs the wheel, Mama. It's a racket that you leave it. You and the rest of the force go for it just because Brother James plays games in front of me. He was convicted and sent to jail once for the same racket he knows in. Did you know that? He is a gentleman. He's a do good. Here, in this book, it shows he's a do good. Oh, this is the book you'd die for just before the mission blew up. Let me take a look at that. Oh, no. No, you will not see the book. No, no one will see it. I better have it, Mama. There, now, that's all right now. That's better. Now, let's see all the good that's in this book. Oh, I do not think I like you very much, Randy. I don't like much about the whole deal, Mama Rizzo. Not much at all. Oh, yes, there's a lot of good here. You know what this is? This is an elaborate record by the day with totals by the week. A brother James take from every one of the suckers on Skid Row. Oh, you, you do not understand. Nickels, dimes, 20 cents here, 35 cents there. It adds up, Mama. Oh. 20, 30 guys playing the game a night, that's hundreds of dollars no. in a week. Oh, no. What do you mean I don't understand? <laughs> Mama Rizzo was crying when I left, and there was nothing to do but let her cry and take brother James' ledger with me back to the emergency hospital. Lieutenant Cass and I looked it over good. Next to a signed confession, it looked like all he needed to send Brother James out for quite a while. Well, it's on me. Funny he'd keep a set of books on it, though. Down the last penny this way. Well, the whole thing's a little funny, Lieutenant, but let's face it, a mission man who runs a policy wheel is apt to do some pretty funny things. Yeah. How's he doing? Better than he should be. Came around a little while ago, had a few words with him. Like what? Well, like he wanted to know if anyone else was hurt, especially asked about this Mama Rizzo character. Said he guessed he'd done wrong, that he was going to repent. Well, he was going to repent the last time. You think I could talk to him and take the book here and talk to him? Sure, sure, go ahead. He'll be here a while. I'll get the full story later. You say you've brought the book with you, Randy? Yeah, right here. You've shown it to the lieutenant, I suppose. Sure. That's good. I'm glad. I feel much better now. Well, how about inside? Don't you feel a little crummy inside? The taking in those characters on Skid Row? That's pretty crummy using the mission as a front. I suppose it's hard for you to understand, Randy. 
But a man must work with the tools at hand. At work, he knows. Well, you were faithful enough to your tools. Policy wheels are all friends of yours. <laughs> you see, you don't understand. I thought the book would make you understand. Not the ledger? It did. Don't you see, Randy? I built the wheel to protect the men on Skid Row. From themselves and from the syndicate. I couldn't keep them from playing the policy wheel. Mino had a big hold on them. So you built your own and went in business for yourself? Not for myself. For the men. My policy wheel worked a little different than Mino's. That's what it shows in the ledger. The figures there are not what the men paid me. But what I paid them. You paid them money? <laughs> not money very often. Money buys wine. No, Randy. I paid them in food, overcoats in the winter, doctor bills, that sort of thing. I guess you'd call it a sort of mutual benefit society. Well, I'd like to believe that. Ask the men. Ask Mama Rizzo. Perhaps I was wrong using the means I did. But a man does what he can, Randy, in his own way. It was wild, but it was true. Lieutenant Cass and I checked every skid row bum in the ledger. Cass will probably get the charge against Brother James dropped by the time he gets out of the hospital. Mino's a cinch to serve a little time if anyone can prove he tossed the pineapple. But the big boys, the well-tailored gents who sit on top of the Minos and run the multi-million dollar numbers games and syndicates, the good chance is they'll just go rolling along. If you find it hard to stomach a mission man running a wheel for the benefit of the down-and-outers, try thinking a while about what the big boys get by with and see how that sets in your stomach. Copy, boy. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis. Tonight's story was written by Kathleen Height with music by Robert Armbruster. Featured in tonight's cast were Tudor Owen, Jeff Corey, Gail Bonnie, Tony Barrett, and Ed Corey. Listen next week at this time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. Beat came to you from Hollywood.